Okay, good morning. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I think what we're going to discuss today is we're going to discuss aerodynamics and the concepts of lift. I think this is going to wind up being multiple videos, so it, for the sake of you know not getting people confused, not getting people worried about what they're doing, so just go ahead and hang on there. I'll go ahead and publish a kind of a reading list on my website where you can keep these in order, and I'll make sure I publish these in a kind of a certain order also, so you don't get too confused. But okay, let's get started. So first and foremost, when teaching aerodynamics, the first thing you teach is the four forces of flight. It is the concept behind flight, and every textbook, when they discuss the four forces of flight, they do that to build a fundamental understanding of how aircraft operate, how flying objects interact in the air when they're flying, and from there you can break that down into other subjects that you can study. So if you talk about the four forces of flight, generally how it starts out is you'll have a picture of an airplane or any type of aerial object. So let's just go ahead and start with that. Okay, bam, airplane. That's actually pretty cool how I can do that. Okay, so you have an airplane and anything that interacts with the air is going to have these four forces of flight. So what you do is when you're looking at this, you have the airplane, then you're going to have some type of vector arrow. And vector is just basically direction with magnitude, if you will. So you're going to have one in the downward direction, you're going to have one going to the right, you're going to have one going up, and then you're going to have one going to the left. All right. And basically all this is, is it just shows the forces that are acting on the aircraft in flight. In this case, you're going to have lift, you're going to have weight, you're going to have thrust, and then you're going to have drag. Now what you want to understand is that some of these concepts are favorable and some of these are unfavorable. In fact, if you were to draw a line that bisects this just like that, then you'll see that these are your unfavorable or basically the forces that keep the airplane on the ground and these are your favorable forces, your thrust and your lift. And these are what you want to achieve flight. And what this chart shows is first of all, the aircraft has to maintain a balance. For every positive, you have to have a negative. Um, essentially, when all the forces are equal, the aircraft is going to be in straight and level flight. When one of these forces exceeds another force, then it's going to have some type of different reaction on the aircraft. So for example, if your thrust vector is higher than your lift vector, or if your lift vector is higher than your weight vector, then your aircraft is going to be increasing in altitude. If your thrust vector is faster or greater than your drag vector, then your aircraft is going to be increasing in speed. And consequently, if your drag or weight is greater than your lift or your thrust, then the aircraft is going to be either slowing down or decreasing in altitude or any combination of the above. It gets, a, as you can imagine, it gets a lot more complicated from here. But this is a very easy way to try to explain your four forces of flight. You just basically, from here, then you can take these and break them down into smaller concepts to which then you can further elaborate and further understand. So, deleting this and let's just kind of break this down more into detail okay so you have your airplane right there here's your thrust vector right here okay so let's talk about so your thrust is going to be the forward motion of your aircraft and your thrust is basically your forward propulsion it's what makes the plane go forward it can be an engine well of course it has to be some type of an engine like a jet engine or a engine with hooked up to a propeller or maybe a bunch of people pushing it off a cliff. You're going to have to have some type of thrust vector to get the plane moving forward to overcome the drag. So we're just go ahead and that's a positive. So we're just going to put that in blue. In fact, thrust is good. So we're just going to go ahead and put that as a positive vector. Now your negative vector is going to be drag. Drag is your negative. Drag is what negates your thrust. If you have higher drag then you do thrust, then your aircraft is going to be slowing down or not moving at all. If you have higher thrust than you do drag, then your aircraft is going to be increasing in speed. If you have the two forces equal, 
then your aircraft will be in unaccelerated flight. Whether it's cold and constant at 400 knots or whether it's sitting at the ground, your thrust is going to equal your drag. Um, that's probably your easiest way to explain it for this concept. It gets a lot more complicated as you could imagine, but this is how it starts. So thrust goes one direction, drag goes the other direction. Now, um, there's different types of thrust, there's different types of drag. You measure thrust in different units of measurement, you can measure drag in different units of measurement. It depends on if you're dealing with metric or imperial or different types of um, numbers. But basically, what you want to be concerned about right now is that thrust goes in one direction, drag goes in another direction. Mm, we'll get more into it, but this is what I want you to remember. So remember this, thrust that direction, drag is the other direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase that and we'll go ahead and start with the other direction. Alright, so we'll put our airplane there then we'll draw a vector arrow going up and this is going to be our lift vector right here. So we'll put L for that and then opposing our lift vector is going to be our weight vector going down which is W for weight. Okay, so lift is what opposes weight. Weight is the force that is the attraction basically to the center of the earth. Uh, the earth is always going to talk about, well, weight is basically your gravity uh, affecting the aircraft. So gravity is attracting the plane towards the center of the earth so therefore the vector arrow for your aircraft it's always going to be pointed towards the center of the earth. Now this is very 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 important to remember not only in the beginning phase but also in all concepts of flight. Even in spacecraft your weight vector is always going to be down towards the center of the earth uh, because that's where the gravity is. That's the, the attraction of the gravity. Um, so this is very important to remember because your weight vector will always be in one direction, in one direction being the center of the Earth. Your lift vector, on the other hand, will, can be in different directions. It's not always opposing your weight. While your lift vector does oppose it, while the force of lift does consequently oppose the force of weight, the vector or the magnitude of the direction is also very important. But we'll get more into that later. But what you want to remember for right now is that your lift opposes your weight. And there's more types of weight. Well, you know, we talk about weight in different ways. Again, you can measure weight in different. You can measure in kilograms or poundage or however else you want to while your lift vector, you start talking about your different types of lift, which we'll go into detail more later on. But for the important thing is you want to remember that your lift is going to oppose your weight and your weight is going to oppose your lift. Weight's always towards the center of the earth lift is going to be in different directions. So what you'll end up with is you'll end up with some type of little chart right here which is just like that. So you have your thrust, you have your lift, you have your weight, and then you have your drag. And that concludes the video about the four forces of flight. Uh, this is a short introduction and then in my part two video we'll explain more into this. Okay, well, uh, see you next video.